designers, welcome back to the studio. Um, we've been working through some of Paul Jackson's sort of folding techniques, and I'm calling them level two folds, but really they're just coming from a totally different text while we're working through um, his sheet to form text. And um, in the last tutorial, we worked through some, some basic precision folding exercises, um, our corrugate or pleat techniques. Um, this time around, we're going to work through um, some slightly more complex techniques. Um, he refers to uh, some of these as sort of symmetrical or uh, making use of uh, a fold motif, a repetitive fold motif. So we'll do a couple of these exercises. And um, then we'll actually get to some uh, cut fold techniques that start to stand up um, and sort of live uh, as more kind of a high relief. So for our first exercise, let's work on this sort of folded motif. Uh, if you're following along in the um, Paul Jackson text, let's work on page 31 and 32. And in that text, he kind of describes how we could use a, uh, a fold motif and repeat it over and over again. Um, to understand sort of what that means, let's actually work up a larger scale version of our basic motif. So we'll need a square uh, piece of paper for that. Um, since I've already got this 5x7 cut, I'm just going to reduce it down to a 5x5 five five, uh, inch piece of paper. Keep this little scrap because we'll likely make use of him in a minute. Now for you guys to be able to see what I'm working on here, I'm going to, um, instead of working right, right away with my creasing tool to mark my lines, I'm going to mark them in a pencil. That way it shows up really nice and clear in the video so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll switch back over to my bone folder. We're going to start by marking the exact vertical center of our piece of paper. Since we're working with a 5x5, five five, um, just finding that 2.5 inch mark is all we need to do. And then we'll do a corner to corner diagonal. Now I'm going to actually switch that over to a creased piece so that you guys can see um, what it might look like without all these big heavy lines. Now our vertical line that came down through the middle, that is going to be a valley fold straight across. So even though I've kind of gently creased that already by compressing the page, I'll sneak my bone folder in and give that a valley. And all of my other folds will be mountain folds. To make that a little faster, I'll just flip my whole piece of paper over and give it the same hard crease along the straight edge. Now when I flip this back over again, um, it'll take a little bit of kind of coaxing, but the whole piece will start to fall into its pattern. So I'll make my valley folds. Crease those edges together, being careful not to uh, over crease the tip here. So that now I'm left with sort of a triangular fold where I've sort of tucked in the edges. This is the basic fold motif that if I could figure out how to stitch it together along multiples, one, two, three, or more, the kind of idea of chain or repeating pattern is essentially what I mean by motif. A motif is something that will repeat over and over again. So let's shrink down our folds a little bit, maybe make use of one of these end cuts that we just had and see if we can't repeat the design a few times. Now, if you remember, this was the offcut of one of our 5 by 7 inch pieces of paper. Let's divide that into its sort of 2 by 2 inch marks. So if I've got 1, 2 here, I'm going to make a vertical mark. And then I'll go 2 more inches, 1, 2. And because I'm just left with 1 inch on the end, I'm going to use my X-Acto blade to snip that off. So essentially this uh, would be a three motif repetition. The one that we've been preparing here will be two. So find the exact center of our first fold. Find the exact center of our second fold. So I've segmented off my design here into one, two, three, four one inch strips and then lay in my diagonals. Okay. 
Now the same rule applies here. All of my verticals were valley folds, so I'll lay in my valleys. Should be three of those in this quick demonstration. I'll turn over my design and lay the diagonals in as mountain folds. Now because this is significantly smaller and connected in the middle, this starts to get a bit more complicated, but use the same folding technique as we did with the larger version and gently kind of coax these folds into place. And give them a nice hard crease. And that is how a motif would work. A motif is repeated at least once. These ones are repeated twice. You can imagine if you had a nice long strip, you could easily keep repeating them uh, toward infinity, or at least until your piece of paper ran out. Uh, now, in the text, Paul Jackson also describes how you might be able to stitch together a slightly offset version of this and create an entire sheet uh, of this design. Those would be really great examples of a project that could take this, um, take this basic motif to the next level. Keep that in mind as you're thinking about what you might want to do with this project in the future. So let's do one more kind of exercise here. We'll start with a similar square-shaped piece of paper. We'll end with a sort of a freestanding star-shaped piece. So to get into second practice, we'll again start with a square or a one by one, in, uh, one, by one aspect ratio. Uh, the piece of paper I have prepped here is a five by five inch piece. And if you're following along in the text, this is on page 36. Now this has a little bit more of a complex setup. And so again, I'll make my markings in pencil first and then I'll switch over um, to creasing it uh, with the folding tool. So we'll find the center vertical, two and a half inches on the vertical, and two and a half inches on the horizontal. We'll work up the diagonals. Okay, now here's a slightly more complicated fold. We need to find the center point between uh, the outer edge of the paper and the center point here, and we'll mark each one of those and then join them together so that we get our basic star pattern. So what we have in, in terms of half of this sheet of paper, because the whole length was five inches, we're left with two and a half inches or one, two, three, four, five, one half inch marks. Uh, what we need to do is find the exact center of those and then we'll need to kind of read the small dot patterns in between. So I'll count one, two, and then sort of find the halfway point inside this dot pattern. And make a small tick mark on the inside of my design. And I'll do that all the way around. Once I've marked my uh, sort of half of a half inch marks here, I'll kind of join from corner to corner. This star-shaped geometric pattern gives us the sort of basic fold motif for the beginning of our freestanding piece. I'm going to set aside the pencil folding technique so that I can actually get rid of all that extra graphite and use just the creases of my bone folder. Now from here, depending on how you read the sort of fold schematic in the Paul Jackson text, you'll either end up uh, with one of these two designs. Neither one of them is incorrect, but I'm going to kind of carry out the fold, uh, the fold motif for this one over here. Um, as I kind of read his text and as I look at my example here, what I want is I want a mountain fold and this kind of center vertical and a valley on the outside. And so depending on how I, you know, how I kind of work those out, 
I'm going to um, begin my hard creases following one of the other of those two trajectories. So for my vertical folds, I want a, um, a valley that sort of takes me from the outside of the page to this vertices, and then pick that valley up on this side and continue it down. And I'll rotate the whole design and continue that. One of the um, one of the kind of benefits of working with this idea of a motif is that um, once you kind of get the basic fold patterns down, uh, it's mostly just a matter of sort of staying focused and making sure that your repetitions continue along that path. So now I want my diagonals to also be a valley, and I can crease those straight across, corner to corner. Now I'll flip my whole design over and finish the rest with mountain folds. It's really important to use your folding tool to be as precise as possible, making sure that I go from vertices to vertices. If my folds start to not really line up on the other side or my initial creases, um, you'll notice that uh, there are uh, too many folds in your final design. Now I'll carefully sort of follow those folds and ease my piece into its final three-dimensional folds. So these folds are getting more and more and more complicated, and um, the setup will take a little bit longer, and the likelihood that you kind of goof up along the way is even better. Um, but what we're learning is how to be very precise with our folding tools, how to be very precise with our initial measurements and markings, and eventually how to use something like a fold motif to create much larger designs. I'm excited to see how you guys work these out in your studio. I'll see you in class.